I don't know. There's just a lot of trying after the play. We're trying to make some stuff happen, and they're doing a little extra pushing and shoving. We're trying to get our fucking job done. That just What's up, everybody? Professional wrestler Chris Wild back with another video. This one on the XFL, the new XFL. Is it worth watching? I know a lot of you out there are kind of like, eh, I don't know. I mean, we all remember the first XFL, right? Uh, bad football, um, cheerleaders, announcers trying to fight coaches. Uh, and, and, like, the biggest thing is the bad football. I mean, the, the names on the back of the jerseys was kind of cool. There were some cool things, like the roving camera that the NFL stole, the one that's in the air. Um, but overall, just a bad product, bad football. And uh, people don't want to watch bad football, which is why preseason NFL football just kind of sucks, and we're trying to get rid of it. Um, so, so that was a myth. And look, Vince McMahon took a huge risk uh, by keeping the XFL name because – that is really, um, again, I've, I've watched ESPN, I've watched even uh, local or listened to local media and people already just acting like it was a joke before even giving it a chance because of the name. Um, but the first game did get 3.3 million viewers, so people did give it a chance this week. Uh, and I was one of them, and let me tell you what, everything that I saw was really, really good. The football was really, really good. Um, and you would think some of these guys, you know, you got a Cornell Jones who, uh, really never got a shot in the NFL. PJ Walker, who really never got a shot because of his size as an NFL quarterback. Guys like Aaron Murray, they're trying to get their name back out there. Matt McGloin, former Eagles bust, uh, out there playing ball. Um, so, you, would, you wouldn't expect great things, but, man, these guys balled out all weekend long. Um, and it wasn't, you know, the way some of the rules are, you would think there would be a lot of it, that the scores would be arena football-like. Uh, but they weren't. There was good defense. The two games on Sunday were good defensive games. The, one, the ones on Saturday were great offensive uh, games. Uh, this thing was just so much better, far exceeded my expectations um, I can't see why somebody would not, that a football fan would not want to watch uh, this kind of football. I know you guys are saying, well, everybody remembers the AAF. It started out great, and then it was gone midseason. Well, why that won't happen with the XFL is because the XFL has uh, great TV deals with Fox, with ESPN, um, ABC, CBS. They've got those deals already in place to where the AAF had, I think, one game maybe on ESPN, and then it went to a lot of different TV stations that we uh, don't know of or, or have never heard of. Um, and then, of course, their their bad, their money guy did not have any money. So once he sold it, and then that guy didn't have any money either, it all went to hell. Vince McMahon has already invested $500 million in three seasons of the XFL. So the only thing that can really take this thing down is if, the, if it gets canceled by the TV stations, which I just don't think is going to happen. I think they're going to get a good rating next week because of everybody that didn't watch is now curious. Um, and let's get to some of the big things, the big changes in the game that I think that the NFL is going to adapt to quickly. First off, the kickoff. Um, awesome. We Everybody loves a good kickoff. However, the NFL has went against that because of safety concerns um, to the point to where they, they moved the, yard, the starting uh, up so that most of them are touchbacks, 75% are touchbacks now. Um, well, the, what the XFL did, and this is genius to me, is they set um, both gunners, uh, up, one on the 35-yard line, one on the 30-yard line, so there's five yards of space in between them. They cannot move until the kick returner gets the ball or the ball's in play for three seconds. So there is always going to be a kickoff. Now, if the ball goes out of bounds, uh, it's a, like a, it's a penalty to where now the, the team will start, the receiving team will start on the 45 yard line. So, I mean, it is just great. We saw some good kickoffs yesterday and Saturday. It's just been, I think that's awesome. I think the NFL should stop what they're doing and implement that today. Another great thing is the thing that they're doing with these referees, all referees are mic'd up. So we're in that, you know, we're all watching the game at the NFL games. And we're always wondering, what are these guys talking about for so long? in this little huddle. Now you get to hear what they are, and then when there was a review, a review, you get to see what the guy's doing in the review booth and hear the conversation between the two. Referees play such a big part of this game. It is so awesome that the XFL has implemented this. Also, every player just about is mic'd up, or every player can hear what the coach is saying in their headset. That takes away this 40-second play clock is now down to 25 seconds. 
makes the game go by quicker, so you're not sitting there for four hours watching a football game. Uh, I thought the broadcast was great as far as the interviewers. It did get to be a little much in certain games, but the interviewers are right in these guys' faces right after a big play, right after a touchdown, right after a field goal misses a kick. He's got an interviewer in his face. It's intriguing. Um, as the days, as the games went on, it got better as far as uh, interviewers sitting on the benches with the guys. It's just, I thought that was awesome. I loved it. Um, there was an F-bomb dropped in uh, one of the early games. Uh, but And there are some things, there's some kinks that they're going to they're gonna have to take care of. In the very first game, you could hear the coach telling the plays to the quarterback. Uh, we don't know what some of these plays mean, so it did get to be a little much. They kind of got away from that uh, during the later games. But I just thought it was also awesome. Also, the extra point. The NFL has kind of killed the extra point. They, they moved the kick back to where it's not automatic anymore. It just kind of messes up games. At least now what the XFL is doing is you have a chance at a one-point, two-point, or three-point play. One-point play is from the two-yard line. Um, two-point play is from the five, and a three is from the ten. So you have to run a play to get those points. I think that's intriguing. Add some strategy into the game. Uh, just really a lot more interesting than the kick. There are field goals. Um still in the XFL, uh, so they haven't taken the kick away altogether. And then the overtime, there's no overtime games this weekend, but if there is, it's like a best of five shootout uh, for, and I'll have more information once that actually happens, but I think that's intriguing as well. Um, again, the game, it just seems more professional. It's not a gimmick this time. Kurt Menefee, uh hearing his voice, you know, him being a guy that calls NFL games, made it seem like an NFL game. Uh, Troy Aikman shows up on the sidelines, um, almost gets involved in a play. I, I mean, and then the, ra uh, the the actual reviews from some players watching has been so good and so positive. And again, the football was actually good. It was good. It, and I mean, you look at, you got hungry guys that are trying to get stuff on tape for the NFL, and that's what's going to happen. And they, they're actually treating this as football and not some gimmick. You didn't hear Vince McMahon's name once. During the broadcast, I watched every game. Uh, you didn't see him. You didn't see anything related to wrestling except for uh, Jordan Smallwood, wide receiver for the Roughnecks, I believe, doing uh, a Randy Orton-type celebration. Um, I mean, it was just so much better than I think anybody could have thought it would be. Uh, and just some of the scores real quick, and I'm going to look down here because I don't know off the top of my head. The Seattle Dragons beat – or, I'm sorry, the D.C. Uh, – Guardians beat the Seattle Dragons 31 to 19. That stadium seemed almost full. I know guys that went to the game said the atmosphere was absolutely awesome at Audi Field. I think DC is going to be one of the better teams and it's also just going to have one of the better fan bases. I mean, you got the Washington Redskins over in DC. Uh not much to cheer for there. Um the Houston Roughnecks beat the LA Wildcats. This was my favorite game. Um 37 to 17. P.J. Walker is an absolute stud. He, This guy, man, uh, the throws, the deep balls, everything was awesome. Look, he looked like Pat Mahomes out there. I know people roll their eyes, but uh, he, did, he was a former backup for the Colts. Didn't get much of a shot because of his size, but, man, he really showed off uh, Saturday. And then Sunday's games, the New York Guardians, who play at MetLife for the Giants, and the Jets play. Um, they won 23 to, or I'm sorry, yeah, 23 to three over Tampa Bay. More of a defensive game. Uh, the Vipers are not good. Um, still, I mean, they were better than I thought they would be, but they're just not good. Their uniforms are hideous too. Uh, and then the big game, the team that I'm rooting for is uh, the St. Louis uh, Battle Hawks because St. Louis doesn't have a football team and their helmet's very eagle-like. I really like that, so I'm going to be rooting for them. They beat the Dallas team, the Dallas Renegades, uh, 15 to nine. Um, that was the game that Trachman was at. I think uh, Moose Johnson kind of owns the team, um, but they beat Dallas, and I don't like any Dallas teams, so that was awesome. And one thing that I don't like about the XFL and talk about the uniforms is the way they have the names on the back of the jerseys. It, it, it's not stitched. They're real little, really cheaply done. I, I really hope that they change that um, in the coming weeks if they could. I mean, it just didn't, I don't know, it didn't look impressive at all to me. Uh, but that's my review on the XFL, guys. You Really, if you love football, if you love the game like I do, check out these games, man. This, I, I mean, it's so much better than it was. I mean, the, the 2001 NF, or XFL was just horrible. All right, this is actual football, um, and it's entertaining. It really is. It was entertained for all the games. 
Um, it, I mean, just, I can't say enough. I can't say how much impressed that I am. Uh, but it was, it was really, really just a great experience. And hopefully people watch and hopefully it just gets better. I mean, this was the first game. Think about that. It was only the first week of this stuff and uh it's off to a roaring start i love it um i think you guys will love it too uh so like i'm gonna jet out of here now but that's my review on the xfl um like share and subscribe this video uh, if any of you are new to watching this you're just looking for some xfl reviews i am a huge diehard eagles guy uh, i bleed green and i talk philadelphia eagles nonstop on this channel but i will be reviewing the xfl as well um because I just think it's, and I wasn't going to, but I just, I'm really impressed with what I saw uh, this week. So go Battle Hawks, go Birds, go Eagles. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys probably later this week with some Eagles free agent news. Uh, some of the rumors that are going around. Um, I'll give you guys my thoughts on those. But thanks for watching. Go Birds.